Hi. Today I thought we'd talk about desoldering tweezers because I often get asked which ones I'd recommend, whether they're worth getting, and obviously more recently whether the JBC ones will work with these Chinese stations. So I thought we'd have a look at some of those things today. The first thing that I would say is if you're thinking about buying tweezers, you would really need to be doing a lot of desoldering to warrant the price of a lot of these sets of tweezers. You'd be much better off buying another soldering station and using a pair of soldering irons to lift components off the PCB. This gives you a lot more dexterity, uh, a lot more use on different types of components as well because you can easily mix and match tips to do whatever you need to do. So I'd say if you're thinking about doing this just for hobby purposes, you're better off buying another soldering station and it will get better use as that. And you'll probably find that what you end up with is two stations set up for different purposes. You know, you might have one set up for surface mount soldering and one for he more heavy duty jobs, that kind of thing. So that would be my first recommendation. However, if you have got your heart set on a pair of tweezers, I thought we'd just look at these two that we've got on the bench today. So what we've got here, first of all, is my Metcal MX PTZ tweezers, which I've had for quite a long time now. And obviously I bought this because I regularly use the MX5200 soldering station. And this was the natural choice for me. Uh, they are quite expensive. So on the Metcal website, it's $434 with the stand. You can also buy it for the CV system, which we looked at recently. Uh, I don't think this has the illuminated rings because we're not trying to use this for soldering. It's for desoldering. So the, the validation part of it wouldn't work, although it will detect the cartridges and on two cartridges there is quite a variety of different cartridges that you can use that will allow you to desolder very tiny components, uh, SOT23 components, right up to very large SOIC type packages with these wide blade uh, cartridges here. So a big variety of tips to choose from and I've been using this for uh, probably about five years now and had really good results out of it. Uh, I do like the handpiece a lot and we'll take a closer look at that in a moment. And then the other set of tweezers we're going to look at today are these JBC tweezers, the AM120, which I actually just bought the other day uh, because I had so many questions about whether we can use these on the Chinese station. So I thought we'd look at that uh, probably in the next video, not this one, because this is more just generally about tweezers. So I bought these tweezers from Kaiser Tech, which are one of the UK distributors of JBC equipment. Uh, I do actually have a 5% discount code in the description below the video if you were thinking about buying anything from Kaiser Tech. Uh, and the tweezers here are £130 including VAT, which sounds pretty reasonable until you realise that that's for the tweezers only. You have to buy the stand separately, which amazingly is more expensive than the tweezers, £174 including VAT. However, it is a very nice quality stand. There are some larger tweezers available, the AT420. However, these weren't available uh, when I was buying the tweezers, so that's the reason I didn't get these larger versions. And again, uh, £168 including VAT, and then 142 for the stand. This one's a bit cheaper, it seems to be because of this metal part of the back, which appears to be a bit cheaper in quality compared to the stand for the 120s, which has this much better uh, system for holding the cartridges and pulling out the tips. Now when it comes to the cartridges for the JBC system, you've actually got less choice than with the Metcal system. For these AM120 tweezers, they take the C210 series of cartridges. So we've got this selection up here, which are relatively small geometry cartridges. In fact, uh, there was only one that I was really interested in and they weren't in stock at the moment. So I've had to go for something a little less optimal. If you go for the larger tweezers, they're much bigger cartridge tips designed for removal of ICs mainly. It's only really these ones over here that would be good for desoldering 0805 components, that kind of thing. So a little bit less choice here. And also when it comes to the solder station choice for these, if you've got one of the modular systems, you're fine because it works with any of the modular stations. However, if you've got the compact line station, you're out of luck because you do actually need to buy the specific station that comes with the tweezers because it has a slightly different uh, connector on the back and also the cradle is slightly different. So, uh, you know, you really need to think up front if you are thinking about buying these tweezers from JBC, uh, you're ending up either buying a complete new station or you need to have one of the modular systems. And a quick message from our video sponsor, JLC PCB, where you can get all different types of PCBs made, one, two, four, and six layer in FR4 and also aluminium PCBs. 
and they also offer PCB assembly with even more components available now, so up to 80,000 components to choose from, including through-hole parts now as well, so it's not just limited to surface mount parts, you can get connectors and all that kind of stuff soldered onto your PCB using their assembly service, so don't forget to visit JLC PCB for your PCB needs. First of all, looking at the Metcal tweezers, the first thing to notice is these feel really, really high quality. They're made from a really nice plastic, I think some kind of glass reinforced plastic, it's got that kind of feel to it, but they feel like an absolute quality piece of kit. Really, uh, when you spend your money and you, these arrive, it feels like you've spent your money on some quality equipment. Um, so we've got the flexible coax cable, and it is very flexible, that goes to the F-type connector that plugs into the MX series of stations. Uh, we've got a little bit of um, strain relief here on the cable, as well as this uh, one-axis ball joint. Uh, and then the tweezers themselves, we can set to this kind of low range of tweezer movement, or if you flick the switch to the right, uh, then they open much wider if you've got the bigger set of uh, tips installed. So that's quite convenient because it means that when you're doing small jobs, you don't they don't spring open all the time. Now, one of the most important things about the tweezers is the ability to adjust the cartridges so that they're fully aligned for whatever you're trying to desolder. So because these Metcal cartridges are based on the RF type cartridges, they've got this non-keyed connector, which means that basically you can adjust the rotation of the cartridge to whatever you want before you push the cartridge all the way home. So that allows you to set sort of the rotation of each of those cartridges independently. And then you have some further adjustability here. So you can see this bottom cartridge here is set a little bit further in than the other one. So this lock ring here allows you to adjust the cartridge in and out. So that's at one extreme. I'll change it now, twist it around so that it goes to the other extreme. So now with this lock ring screwed all the way in, you can see it's just slightly overlapping the other cartridge. You get about two and a half millimeters of adjustment, which is more than adequate for every type of cartridge that you're going to encounter. Now, when you look at it along this way, you can see that these are completely misaligned, which is something that regularly happens with poor quality tweezers. However, this lock ring adjusts this sort of eccentric uh, adjustment here. So when we rotate this, you can see the tips moving up, and now it's at the tallest position, and then when you press them together, it's pretty much perfectly aligned. So you get all of the adjustment that you need with these tweezers. And that's about all there is to say about this handpiece. Uh, as I've said, basically, uh, I just set this up once and they've never needed adjusting, uh, no matter what cartridges I've inserted. So uh, these have been pretty good for me. When it comes to the JVC tweezers, sadly, you're not greeted with the same high quality that we were with the Metcal tweezers. The fit and finish is nowhere near as good and it also feels quite plasticky. So you can see there's some flash uh, where it's come out of the mold and not been uh, finished afterwards. Uh, the fit and finish here, not great. A bit of weirdness going on here. This edge over here is also quite sharp. Uh, generally not quite the quality that you'd expect from JBC equipment, so a little bit disappointing from that aspect. Um, now the cable that comes off it is flexible silicone coated cable, not as thin as on the uh, normal hand pieces. You can see there's a bit of a difference there in the thickness. I'm guessing there's some additional conductors here for the extra cartridge that's there. Uh, we've got quite a short strain relief on this one compared to the T245 handpiece. Uh, and then we've got a bit of adjustment here for the cartridges and then the cartridges just plug in the end here. Now, one thing on the cartridges, I bought some um, C210 cartridges to try with the Ixon station uh, and these uh, what are they? 120 cartridges appear to be identical. I've tested them out. The uh, impedance of the heating element is exactly the same. So I'm wondering if actually uh, if these chisel type tips work better for you, whether you'd be able to just plug two of those into the tweezers and use them like that. Uh, because a lot of the cartridges for the AM120 are conical tips, which don't always work that well for desoldering. Uh, so now I'm going to order another um, C210 cartridge um, of this style and test whether they'll actually work in these tweezers because that may, might make them a little bit more usable. Um, but these plug into here. There's a bit of movement. They're actually a little bit of a faff to get into place. Uh, and then they do kind of fit home at the end there. And then they sit in place. So let's just uh, insert those and then we'll see what the adjustment is like. 
So the cartridges are now fully inserted into the tweezers and the first thing to note, uh, although we've got three thumb wheels here, there is one adjustment missing. So if one of these cartridges happens to stick out more than the other, you've got no adjustment here. You might be able to bodge it by not inserting the cartridges fully into the tweezers as the other one, but there's no thumb wheel adjustment to change that setting, which I think is a bit of a fail really, especially with these small conical tips uh, sometimes it is possible for these to get bent and one tip will stick out a bit more than the other and basically there's no way to correct that alignment issue. Uh, what we've got here is two thumb wheels that can adjust the rotation of the cartridge. Now these cartridges aren't keyed in the first place so you can get them pretty much aligned correctly in the first place but when we twist these thumb wheels which you tend to have to do with your nail because they're a bit stiff uh, if you watch this bottom cartridge here you can see it rotating you get about 90 degrees of adjustment with these thumb wheels, the same on the other side as well. So we can adjust those to basically the right point. And then we have this adjustment wheel here, which sets the alignment uh, sort of in this direction here, so the offset between the two. Uh, hopefully you can see this, it's a little bit tricky to capture on camera, but as I twist that thumb wheel, you can see one moving to the left and the other one moving to the right. And then as I twist it, the other way they start to misalign the other way however what I will say is that you can actually misalign them by hand uh, this is just me applying a little bit of pressure on the bottom of this one now you can see they're completely misaligned one way and if I was to apply a bit of pressure the other way then they f they uh, slip the other way so there's actually quite a bit of play in the handpiece in the first place which almost makes this adjustment redundant because as you use it they tend to move all over the place anyway now, unlike the tweezers, the cradle feels really, really high quality. It's all made from metal. It weighs at least a kilo, uh, and it is really quite nice. I do like this cradle. Uh, we've got the connectors at the back. So this is one of the systems where uh, you don't have to have the power station right next to the cradle. So you can have the control unit uh, underneath your desk or whatever. It comes with a cable to plug into this connector here. And then you have the second connector that goes off to the tweezers. So this can be much closer to you. Uh, than the power control unit. So that's quite nice. Uh, we've got space at the back here for the various tips that you might want to store on here and also this section here for removing the tips. But what I've found is this is actually really difficult to use um, and it very easily would damage the tips if it slightly goes wrong. And the problem being is that it tries to grip onto this part of the cartridge here and there's not actually a lot of meat here Compared to the C245 cartridges where you've got this big chunk of metal uh, after the shaft where you can easily pull it out in the stand, these ones have got so little metal it's easy for it to slip past and then you wreck the tips on the tweezers. So I actually wouldn't recommend that you use this. I'd suggest you use a silicone pad or just wait until the tips have cooled down, which coincidentally they do very quickly because they've got quite a low thermal mass. Now, the largest problem I have with this cradle and it's also true of the compact line series of stations where uh, this is fixed to the station, is that this doesn't seem to hold on to the right part of the tweezers. With the Metcal system, um, you saw that we had uh, it holding on to the actual tweezers and the tips are free floating in there. However, on the JBC system, the, the um, tweezers themselves don't actually sit in the hole there's nothing that you can do to get it to hold in like this so you end up with it sitting like this which I think is the intended design but it seems bizarre that you'd happily be heat sinking away all the heat from your tips into this metal part here uh, and it just doesn't seem like it fits right you can see it's obviously designed to help support um, the tweezers themselves but you're basically putting all your pressure on these quite precision tips that are already quite um, small in diameter and if you had this sitting on your desk and you accidentally knocked it you know uh, just doing general stuff you're very easily going to damage these cartridges so I really don't like the design of this it feels just completely wrong I don't know why they haven't designed it to hold on to the tweezers over here and just leave the tips free floating it does seem a slightly strange design decision I've just quickly soldered some 0805 components onto the PCB and the tweezers should be pretty self-explanatory to use. You may need to tin the tips first of all but really it's just a case of going in and grabbing your component off the PCB so you can see how quick 
it is to desolder parts from your PCB using a set of tweezers. You can just go in there and grab them quite easily. The Metcal, of course, is exactly the same. We can use it very easily to remove components. So we can just go in there. However, we can also quite easily just go in with a pair of soldering irons and lift out our component. You can see that's really not too much trouble. They don't even need to be matching irons, of course. This is the ultra-fine handpiece from Metcal, and this is the larger one. And also, depending on your technique, if you don't need to save the component, you can also just add a bit of extra solder and lift the part with just a single soldering iron, depending on what it is, obviously. For SOIC type packages or multi-lead packages, you do need that second iron. But for small components like this, you can easily just do it with a single soldering iron. Now, these aren't quite the right cartridges, but we can probably remove some of the bigger parts here with these tweezers as well. So not too much trouble there to do it with tweezers, but there are tips that are much bigger in geometry that are designed for these larger parts. So that's a quick look at these two sets of desoldering tweezers and they do work very nicely despite the shortcomings of the build quality of the JBC tweezers they do work very nicely for removing components from the PCB and they are quite ergonomic they do fit nicely into the hand and obviously you saw no trouble with the Metcal tweezers either. However both of these in my opinion are a complete luxury especially for hobbyists and a lot of people are asking whether we can use these with the Ixon station which we will look into in another video i need to order some component uh, some connectors so that we can try and connect it up and see how it all works but given the price point of these you're way better off spending money and buying another soldering station then you've got a whole load more flexibility you can have one set up for big soldering tips one set up for small uh, or just whatever suits best but it probably will work out much better to buy that than to invest in a set of tweezers and then you have to invest in the cartridges that are specific to the tweezers and all that kind of stuff and the whole thing just becomes quite expensive where if you've got a little bit of dexterity which I'm assuming you do have if you're using tweezers and uh, soldering iron to solder parts onto the PCB you should be able to handle two soldering irons to remove the parts quite easily so that would be what I suggest and you know these Ixon stations coming in at about 100 to 130 dollars is cheaper than one of these setups so you know you'd be better off with another one of those in my opinion. Now if you really have got money burning a hole in your pocket uh, to some extent you're going to stick with the brand that you've already got you're not going to go out and buy a Metcal station just to use the desoldering tweezers so uh, although uh, I can caution you about the build quality of these uh, they, they are functional they do work and uh, you know they do heat up they've got all the attributes of a normal JBC system the cartridges heat up very rapidly and you're able to dump quite a bit of heat to very easily desolder components from your PCB now you might say why don't we just use hot air and you can use hot, hot air to desolder parts from your PCB the problem with it is that you will be heating up a whole area of the PCB so if you've got heat sensitive components or you've got uh, something that's not just your PCB, like connectors, that kind of thing, or other plastic parts, is very easy to melt with a hot air station. Whereas with the tweezers, you're heating up only the component, uh, obviously a little bit of the tracers on the PCB as well, but really uh, the heat is going to be very local to that one component, and it's going to be a lot less stressful for the other components on the board. So that's why um, hot, hot air isn't always the correct answer for desoldering parts from the PCB, although... Uh, you know the majority of times it will work absolutely fine. So I hope you found this video useful there's not a huge amount of content out there about desoldering tweezers so hopefully I've answered many of the questions. If I left anything out please leave a comment down below if you've got any suggestions leave them in the comment section I'll try and address them there or if it warrants it in a follow-up video. Also thank you to JLC PCB for being our video sponsor don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some PCBs made and also a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are really helping support the channel. And especially when we have to buy unplanned purchases like these tweezers, uh, it's really nice to have a little bit of extra support uh, with trying to buy these things. So a big thank you to you. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, thanks for watching.